Let me say just a word, will you? They're, they're there, you just don't see them. Oh, well, they got one here. Can you turn me on? Good evening, everyone. Before, before we actually begin the service, I um, have two things to share with you. And one of them, uh, if you were here this morning, you remember who Dennis Amlong is. Dennis joined our church this morning, uh, along with his wife and daughter, who are already members of our church. But, uh, you know, I'm, I talk with folks and tell them I'm glad they joined. And they say, well, us too. I mean, they're nice, like y'all were with you too. <laughs> anyway, I got a, an instant message from Dennis this afternoon. I am still overjoyed by the new brothers and sisters in Christ I met today at church. God bless Mary for bringing me, and God bless everyone who made me feel so welcome. And, uh, yeah. The other word I need to share is uh, I sent out an email this afternoon, and uh, uh, we got a call today that uh, Marcella Ramey's family, who was coming back from, uh, I guess, New Orleans, had been on a cruise to Mexico, family trip, I guess, for spring break. They were on their way home, and somewhere around Jackson, Mississippi, they were in a terrible accident. And uh, Marcella is Teddy Miller and Margie Fish's sister. She comes pretty regularly to our church, older lady. Uh, anyway, uh, her daughter was killed. Her granddaughter's husband was killed. And the other children that were in the car were seriously enough injured. They had to be airlifted to area hospitals in Jackson. Uh, so I can't share any more than that, but I wanted to be sure if you hadn't had a chance to check your emails that you would be aware of that. Also would let you know that I checked on Nadine Weir and she's still alive this afternoon. I checked with the hospital and so the family's still there in, in that vigil, but the doctors again give them no hope. It's just a question of when her heart quits. Um, and then I talked with Don Cook and Helen's feel a little bit rougher today. She's still dealing with that infection, but uh, so she was laying down and resting, but you know, she's glad to be home. So wanted to share that update with you. Forgive me for doing that, but Wanted to just give you that word, but I thought you'd enjoy hearing from Dennis. Man, I love hearing from a new member that has that kind of, yeah. of uh, yeah. attitude yeah. about him, and, and uh, it blessed me when I got it and wanted to share it with you. Thank you. Can I make a comment? Oh, please. You know the elderly lady that died at Nigel Hurst, Pat Harder? Yes. She completely lost all her eyesight. And yes. They had to move her into a... Yeah, Pat has been moved uh, out of her apartment. She's now in the nursing home. And uh, so she'll not be able to come back, right. and unfortunately. I visited with Pat two or three times. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, we see things like that happen to folks. We love them and, mm -hmm. and care for them. Uh, Nadine Weir would have celebrated her 93rd birthday this, the end of this month. And uh, so, yeah, no, that's fine. Thank you for the update. Yeah, indeed, Pat Harder. And I, I didn't get to talk with Marty Pinson this afternoon, but I did get to, I uh, got his number, so I was able to call Marty's father has died, mm -hmm. and uh, just to let him know of our prayers and our thoughts. So, mm -hmm. all right, forgive me, I don't mean to put gloom on, but as, as we begin tonight, I wanted to take just a moment to say a word. You can turn me off now, Jim. <laughs> Forever. I'm watching. Well, <laughs> for now, at least, he'll be back later, we know. Uh, can't keep away from here long. Amen. Can't keep him away. But um, a lot of, we had a lot of happy news, some lot of difficult news, but as we know, just like we're sending hope here, we know there is, of course, hope in Jesus Christ, and we're very thankful that Helen's doing better, and actually, she's hoping to watch uh, the broadcast this evening, uh, so we look forward to, we're very blessed to be able to have, let people either listen or watch to uh, our services when they're unable to be here, so we do want to thank the two gentlemen taking care of that for those at home. So we're here together specifically about Annie Armstrong, and we've only been doing an Annie Armstrong uh, evening service for a couple of years now, but really, honestly, uh, just as important as a lot of them. Um, this is really a mission field in need of hope, as it talks about 363 million people. And where is that? Well, our mission field is the North American uh, Mission Board, and this is including several different areas. Let's see, I have it written here because I'll forget something if I don't. And it's pretty small on that screen, so I apologize. But it's not only the United States, but Canada and the U.S. territories of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Guam, and American Samoa. So this is all North America, well, majority 
and a lot of people, a lot of needs, 350 languages, 14 religions, and 273 million estimated lost. That's where we're sending help. And the Amy Armstrong Easter offering <clears throat> is, again, about those home missions. So what we have here, our theme, as I keep repeating, in 2019 is sending hope. And our scripture verse is 1 Peter 1, 3. As we show on the board, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our national goal, again, this year is 70 million. Our church goal is a little different, a little bit smaller, but still very significant of 2,300. I believe we can't give you the exact number, but we, our goal last year was 2,000, and we did succeed, uh, exceed that a little bit. So we're hoping to jump up just a little bit more this year because we know we can do that <laughs> at this point. And then there's just that little reminder, as you see on the bottom of this slide, that 100% of Annie Armstrong offering goes directly to supporting the missions, not administrative or other duties. So church planning and compassion ministry <coughs> through, should have got me some water, <laughs> through uh, the North American Mission Board. <laughs> and I guess I should thank Cindy for the slides because I'm not clicking them myself here. But I also want to thank Ernie and Linda. They're going to lead us in the next song. Are you? I'm going to start with People Need the Lord, a wonderful song from the 80s. And I'd like you to stand with me as we sing. If you love to use hymnals, it's 557. If you don't, it's on the board. <laughs> just to share with you something about it. This year, they gave us a really nifty video. It saves you listening to me rambling about it because they do it so nice. We have a quote here from Annie on the board. That the future lies all before us. Shall it be only be a slight advance upon us that what we usually do ought it not be bound, but a leap forward of attitudes of endeavor and success undreamed of before. So Annie Armstrong, again, what the offering is offered, who the offering is named after. We have a nice video here to tell you more about that. For almost a hundred years, in big cities with a hundred skyscrapers and tiny towns with one stoplight, on college campuses and Native American reservations, and churches too many to count, hundreds of thousands of men and women and boys and girls have made hundreds of thousands of life-changing decisions. Almost none of them knew her name. And yet, she was there. Annie Armstrong lived more than a hundred years ago. Only this one picture of her survives. History could have easily forgotten her. But Annie Armstrong is worth remembering. 
In the late 1800s, when most women had no voice, Annie was one of the first to speak up. First, for the urban poor in her hometown of Baltimore, and then for Southern Baptist missionaries around the world who desperately needed support. It was for these people that she helped start the National Women's Missionary Union. As its first executive leader, she gave women a platform in their local church and in ways that they'd never done before. These women helped focus Southern Baptist attention on the hurting and the lost and the missionaries trying to reach them. Annie wrote letters, 18,000 in just one year. And she traveled across America, encouraging missionaries and inspiring churches to pray, to give, and to act. She worked long hours, paid her own expenses, and refused to accept a salary. And in the darkest days of the Depression, right before she died, an offering was named after her. Today, the Annie Armstrong Easter Offering helps missionaries in the U.S. and Canada start new churches and meet needs through Compassion Ministries. Over the years, Southern Baptists have given more than $1 billion to that offering, and 100% of it, every penny, has gone straight to the mission field. There's still work left to do. The need is bigger than ever, and that's why even though she lived more than a century ago, and even though only one picture of her survives, Annie Armstrong's influence lives on. Because today in North America, just as it's been from the beginning, anywhere a missionary is sent, every time a new church is born, anytime someone gives to her offering so that a lost person might be found, Annie is there. Thank you, Abby and Noah looking after me there. <laughs> Got my glass of water. Um, and as they mentioned, uh, she started the uh, first executive officer of the Women's Missionary Union, which we do have a local chapter. I'll take one moment as the director to plug every second Saturday. Welcome to join us downstairs in Children's One. We'd love to have you ladies come work with us on missions in the community. Um, our next section here is on praying for some of the missionaries. You may have seen some of them in some of these handouts, if you've seen some of these going around the church. Um, there, we have some specific ones listed on here, and I really apologize if I butcher any names. But um, uh, Jorge, Jorge, Jorge and Rebecca Santiago, uh, Philip and Jemai Nachi, and we have Rob and Lisa Warren, a Chinese church planner, which we'll talk more about here in a bit. And they do have our, their cities on there, but it's too small for me to read. <laughs> um, you may be able to see it up there pretty good, actually. Oh, I see it better behind me. Maybe I should turn around and make you stare at the back of my head. <laughs> uh, Muchi and uh, Diamond. Diam okay, I looked at these before, and I apologize. I'm not good with names. Uh, but And then we got... Louis and Beatrice Soto. So these are the six that we focused on in our, the week of prayer for this month. And again, we're going to take a moment here to pray for our North American missionaries. And of course, all, not just these six, but all of them. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for not only bringing us here safely tonight, but for all the work you do through us, through those no missionaries that we've talked about here today, and those that we will continue to talk about, as well as the rest of them that are working all over silently. <laughs> Uh, not only in our state, but in North America and beyond. Please be with them as they struggle to uh, share your word and uh, spread your compassion throughout well, the world, um, one, one person at a time. So again, be with us tonight, this evening, as we learn not only more about this, this uh, Annie Armstrong and the fund, but um, as we learn about what we can do to support it. In your name, amen. All right, so we do have a little bit, a little video here about one of them to start, and then we'll go into talking about a little bit about Send to North America. Come on. 
Comarillo is a beautiful place. But when I was young, I got lost in drugs and alcohol. And, and I come from a good family. So they decide to send me to the United States, thinking that new people, new area might help. And that's what I received, Jesus Christ. I never thought that I was going to come back to Comario, but I made a few trips to, to visit my family here. And, and I start seeing the neighborhood and the people of my neighborhood, my people, differently from all those times before. And that's how God started working in my life to, you know, give me the desire to come back to Comerio and start a church. But then everything changed. When I think about the damage that Hurricane Maria caused in Comerio, I was so heartbroken because I knew my people need help. We didn't have any electricity and uh, we didn't have any water. And watching clothes for us was really tough. And God started putting the desire on me to do like a laundry. We shared the gospel and pray with so many people at the watcher machine area. Since we are following Jesus, following God on this, God quickly moved us to start a church to see those people getting baptized. For me, that's exactly what God wanted to get done here in Comerio. So when people give to the Honey Armstrong offering, I see that they are not just putting money in a place, but they are investing in people's life, in someone else's eternal life. And that means a lot. Fantastic. I love how they're focusing on how you have to meet the needs of the people, too. The laundry was just such a fantastic idea to do that um, and investing in people's lives. So I'm definitely thankful for these wonderful videos the North American Mission Board has on there. I really think that they kind of send home really the impact that any Armstrong offering has on the missionary field. Um, what we have a little bit about here is our Send City. It's a concept where the North American Mission Board, or NAM, as you could call it here. It's identified about 33 SEND cities that basically receive intense church planning efforts that have been identified as areas that they really want to partner with. And as you'll see on the next slide, you can't read the <laughs> probably can't read them all, but um, there's everything in the West from Las Vegas and Denver, Phoenix, uh, Portland, Salt Lake City, San Francisco, to the Midwest and Chicago, St. Louis. As we talked about, uh, actually, in East St. Louis, church last year on uh, Kansas City, many others, uh, Detroit, then over through Atlanta and New, New Orleans, Boston, New York, they pretty much covered a lot of it all the way down to Puerto Rico. So 33 cities that they're really focused on, you can kind of see the dots on the map. And of course, you can check out the North American Mission Board website and get a little more information. Even if you Google any Armstrong, they'll, it'll come right up too. But um, one thing we'd like to focus on a little more closely, and I think Mom was gonna talk about here in a moment, is Send St. Louis. There's a specific subside about that, and I think there's a little bit on the, actually, no, you were gonna talk about the next section. I forgot, we traded off, okay. <laughs> and I printed off so I could read it a little easier, but I, I didn't move to the right place, so forgive me. But highlight some things about St. Louis. 2,739,374 is their last count here. What that works out to be is one Southern Baptist Church for every 7,760 people. As you know, there's not 7,760 people here tonight, so <laughs> we're obviously not <laughs> covering that ratio, but it is something they're intending on. There are 42 active Sin Church planters in the area. In fact, we have a graphic here. A little, again, hard to see, I know, because it's far away, but here are some of the dots. We've got the current church plants are the white dots, and this is just the St. Louis Metro and, and kind of down to Imperial and 
that we kind of zoomed in on the map there. Potential planting locations are yellow. There's even some red replanting. Really light colored green dots <laughs> that you can see. Again, you can check out this on their website. But there's a star you can see down toward that where that legend is, and that's us. Just wanted to highlight it, but those little light green dots are all the Southern Baptist churches in the area. So on our next slide, <clears throat> we have four missionaries in the area that you can learn a little bit more about. We're not focusing necessarily on those in the week of prayer, but definitely as you're doing your prayers this month or going forward, please keep these in your, in your thoughts and prayers. We've got Anthony, Robert, Crampton, uh, Kimpton, and Shane. <clears throat> so definitely keep them in your prayers. Um, we have some statistics as well. 2.7 million residents, as we mentioned. Less than 18% are affiliated with an evangelical church. There's about 110 different languages we're working with. Interesting fact that there's 70,000 or more Bosnians living in the area. Actually, the largest po population. <clears throat> Get to that water. <laughs> uh, in the United States. So interesting fact, and that's just one of the folks we're working out to reach. One of our local goals for the St. Louis area is to plant 75 new churches in the next five years, and the state goal for Missouri is $2 million. So we have local goals down to our level all the way up to our national, and uh, these are just, we're going to talk about some ways that these monies are being used. So <clears throat> the next one is the Chinese church planter video that we talked about earlier. Right now, there is history being made. It starts with Chinese people, hundreds of thousands of them, moving to our cities in search of the American dream. When they get here, they are curious, lonely, and lost. My name is Jeremy Sin, and I help Chinese believers starting Southern Baptist churches for these people. The believers and church planters I work with, their home country is communist, and takes a strong stand on atheism. That's why we don't show you the faces or use the names, but you need to know their stories. Chinese people really are cautious towards Christians and the church. That's a foreign thing to them. This Chinese brother came to a major U.S. city to attend school. There he found himself surrounded by tens of thousands of other Chinese people. And when he discovered he was just about the only Christian in his community, he changed his plans. He started a Chinese first ever Mandarin-speaking Southern Baptist Church. And now his church is growing because the Chinese people he meets all seem to want the same thing. God has opened doors and some Chinese people make friends with us. Now they gradually bring their friends to our group. Many big North American cities have a hundred thousand or more Chinese people, but only one or two or zero Chinese Southern Baptist churches. That's why your gifts to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering are so important. Because when you give, you're helping to start the first ever Chinese churches like this one and helping to create first ever gospel encounters a lot of Chinese people came here to have a better life. There's more freedom. There's more of everything good in the United States. But real freedom, real life is in Christ. You cannot see their faces. You cannot know their names. But you can help change their lives when you give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. That's why it's important for everyone to know the stories about missionaries like this one and the Chinese people they are meeting and introducing to Jesus. I'm not sure why she keeps turning the mic off because I turn it off in the back. Uh, 
I'm going to move a little bit so you can see the charts. I'm going to be talking about the money that uh, comes in for Annie Armstrong. And uh, it's uh, our total gifts for last year was $59,668,080. Our goal was $70 million. We did not reach it. But 49% uh, of the money that comes into the home missions comes from Annie Armstrong. Uh, the cooperative program is 15%, and then 36% is from other sources of financing. But uh, at least we do get probably close to half of our money comes in for Annie Armstrong, well, actually for home missions from the Annie Armstrong offering. The, all of the monies that is given to Annie Armstrong go strictly to the missions. None of it goes to anything else. Uh, you'll see also that 52% uh, of the monies that we received were used uh, on Annie Armstrong, okay? Hmm? Uh, Cindy Nixon, okay. Uh, how are um, gifts equipped North American missionaries? $5 would be used for bus fare to travel in the local communities because they do use the buses. Uh, $25 meals uh, with uh, unreached persons. $85 subscription for training resources. $100 of it would go to anniversary gifts for a missionary couple. And $175 is for laundromat fees for a family of four. So all of those different things go in, and it will go on down uh, to the diff different monies. Uh, the worship facilities is up to $1,400 a month. Uh, Bibles, tracts, et cetera, is $1,200. Emergency travel assistance is $1,000. Uh, food and supplies for a neighborhood outreach event would be $500. And $300 is used in training and conferences for church planning. Um, well, I, I did want to mention in St. Louis, I've noticed that um, they've started a program in North St. Louis County right now, and I think any Armstrong or Home Missions would be part of this, is that they are now doing uh, free meals that they're giving out to the people constantly to because they're saying, that it should help the crime rates in North uh, St. Louis area because people commit the crimes a lot of times because they're hungry. And so it's uh, Feed St. Louis. And it's, it's a new program that they're just starting. And uh, I think that's a very good program that should help with the people going on. Dear Church. Dear friends. Hello, my name is Emily. My name is Grayson and I'm nine years old. I realize you might not remember where you know me from. That's why I'm sending you this letter. I'm writing to tell you how much I appreciate your gift. I grew up next to the oldest Catholic church in Montreal. When I was little, my parents told me we were moving. I work with refugees who come to America from Muslim, Hindu, and Buddhist countries. I knew there was a God, but I didn't understand who he was. I did drugs, and my self-esteem was zero. I live in the Bronx. I was a single mother trying to raise two kids, and if that sounds hard, it's because it is. We left all our family and friends and went to start a church in a city where we didn't know anyone. Many people thought if we wanted to share Christ with Muslims, we should move overseas. When I wasn't selling drugs, I cleaned carpets. That's how I ended up in a new church and meeting the pastor there. My kids started going to after-school tutoring at a ministry center down the street and I started noticing how they would act different when they would come home. I was desperately looking for the perfect recipe for happiness. That's when a friend at work suggested I go to her church. One day a package came in the mail. Inside were cards and letters from a kid's Sunday school class. I was looking for something, I don't know what, and so I went to that new church's first worship service. 
My kids after school program asked if I could help out. And I felt so welcome there, we started going to their church on Sundays. The first time I went, I cried every tear in my body when I realized there was a God who loved me more than I could ever love myself. My wife and I want every Muslim, Hindu, and Buddhist to meet someone who can point them to Christ. And we used to feel pretty lonely in that work, but now we no longer feel alone. The cards said things like, we're praying for you and we love you. We put the cards on our refrigerator and I look at them every day. I found Jesus at that new church and now I walk in the light. And that's why I'm writing to say thank you. I have a joy in my heart and you helped make it possible. Your gifts to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering helped start the church where I and my kids gave our lives to Jesus. Now I'm a new person, so I thank you and I thank God. We missionaries could never do what we do without you. We could never say thank you enough. Thank you for sending someone for me. Thank you for remembering me. Thank you for giving. Sincerely, Emily. Your missionary, Trent. Your friend, Grayson. Your brother in Christ, David. Sincerely, Mildred. Get another nice video about the impact just on a personal level, you know, uh, whether you can go and act or you, every dollar makes a difference and every prayer makes a difference in these people's lives. So um, trying to make those numbers sway in, in the more positive direction. What, what we're planning on doing tonight, we've got next one more song, Send the Light. And uh, we're going to, at the end here, after we sing through a couple verses, we have a lovely little dish here so that we'll pass around. And uh, actually, Noah, you've been wanting to help out. Would you like to help pass that out? <laughs> Such a good helper. So at the end here, we'll do that. You're no obligation to give today for certain, but definitely we would like you to pray at the very least. And of course, join us in the back for a meal. Pastor John's going to come up, I think, right after the song, um, after the piano. Linda plays lovely for a moment, and um, we'll again end in prayer. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Again, if you like to use your hymnal, it's 595, and it's the first and third verses. Are we sure the Baptist put this together? Because usually if a verse is left out in the Baptist church, it's usually the third verse. But, but we're going to sing first and third verses as we uh, as we also collect that offering, let's sing. Send the light. There's a call comes ringing over the restless waves. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere be bound. Send the light.
join in the back, I believe, or some of our ladies from WMU made um, the Wisconsin, ba Wisconsin Baptist State Muffins. Um, some of our missionaries come from Wisconsin, so these are some of the North American recipes we got here. Um, there's also some Minneapolis hot dish, which is a casserole, so do enjoy that as well. And then a Puerto Rican coconut, a kind of wiggly pudding. <laughs> so, and we have the recipes as well, if you're interested. As well as these lovely envelopes. So thank you, Pastor John. All you. Well, I wasn't sure I'd be able to be here this evening. I'd uh, been invited to speak at an African-American church this afternoon down in the city. But I got a call about 1.30 that uh, the storm that came through the last night and knocked electricity out along much of Telegraph um, also knocked electricity out down in the city. And uh, so their church was without electricity, so they'll reschedule it. So I'm grateful I was able to come, and I appreciate your sharing the information and the videos with us. Um, they asked me to be brief, and of course I ignored them completely. So I do want to share a couple of things with you that I think will be helpful. And one reason, or one thing, is why this envelope is so powerful. Okay? Our church gives 12% of every dollar that's given to our church to the cooperative program. And of course, as most of you understand, it is just what it says cooperative missions. But let me explain the cooperation. When we receive $10, we send that 12% uh, of that, or $1.20, uh, goes to Jeff City. Of the $1.20 that goes to Jeff City, uh, they keep 60% of that. Uh, so they would keep roughly $0.75, cents and, uh, and the balance they would send on to Nashville, uh, to SBC. SBC would then divide that half of what's left the FBC, uh, SBC gives the International Mission Board. And approximately 25% of what's left goes to the North American Mission Board. The balance is used to uh, support our seminaries and uh, uh, our uh, Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission and, uh, of course, administrative costs for the SBC. And so if I give a dollar to our church, um, you know, I may be thinking a dollar's going to missions, but 60% of that dollar stand right here in Missouri. Now, some of that is used for missions. As some of you know, I'm on the state executive board, and so I see where some of that money goes, but some of that money is used to pay salaries for staff members or provide cars or pay for the buildings, and kind of the same things we do here at our church, okay? Things that have to be paid for. And so my point is, what makes this envelope so valuable? is that 100% of what you put in this envelope goes to the North American Mission Board. Um, even the cost of printing these envelopes. And one of the reasons that Annie Armstrong is uh, uh, given the name honor for this offering is because she was the first corresponding secretary of our national WMU. And the 18,000 letters that were referenced earlier that she wrote were to help raise money for missions. And, uh, and because of her efforts uh, and for the years since, uh, WMU's national headquarters are in Birmingham, Alabama. Brenda and I have been there a couple of times. Uh, they pay for the offering envelopes every year. They pay for the offering envelopes for Lottie Moon as well. Uh, and so all of the costs of the promotional materials, the videos that are sent out and so on, WMU covers that. And that way, the money you put in this envelope goes 100% to support missionaries throughout North America. The second thing I wanted to share with you is that missions comes close to home, and it sort of gives it a face. Um, uh, you notice the, that one graph that showed different places around St. Louis where churches are being planted. Uh, that's new churches, okay, where there was not one. But over half of the dots on that map were replanting. That means churches that have struggled and are failing, and they try to pump new life into them. And uh, Starling Road being a case in point, okay? Heartland Baptist Church, right down the street. Uh, next Sunday, they will have a new pastor, unless something has happened that I'm not aware of. The last word I had about a month ago, um, and interestingly enough, the young man that is coming as their pastor was a member of the church I pastored out in West County and uh, I was pastor to his parents. And so 
looking forward to him becoming a neighbor to us. He and his wife have been in India. They have nine children. And uh, so that will almost double the size of Heartland Baptist Church when he <laughs> begins his work. But my point is, because Heartland has struggled, part of what you give to more North American missions comes back to St. Louis as one of those key cities. And part of the money that comes back to St. Louis as one of those key cities will go to Heartland to help pay the salary for Jeff so that he can be the pastor of that church. And that's what replanting is about. It is helping struggling churches to get back on their feet and hopefully begin to thrive. Um, we talked about at supper last night, uh, one of the interesting paradigms in all of this is they always seem to change the name of their church. And so uh, a lot of these churches don't have the word Baptist in their church name. And uh, somehow they think that will help them, I don't know, uh, get them into the kingdom or something. But uh, anyway, the money you give helps to do that. And so some of the money you put in this envelope that is 100% for missions comes right back to St. Louis and supports missionaries and church replants here. And uh, uh, unfortunately, this past week, we had gotten word of a 45-year-old pastor over at Afton, uh, First Baptist Church of Afton for many years, uh, went through a replant. So now they're the church at Afton. And uh, unfortunately, their pastor died last Saturday night of a heart attack. And so... Uh, uh, that church is struggling. We certainly want to pray for them. But again, your offering envelope through North American Missions helps to make that possible. So there's a lot more to it than just sending an offering somewhere and never hearing from it again. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to share in this fellowship tonight as we have heard and thought about missions in North America, close to home, places where Many of us have been where many of us know of folks, maybe even have friends or relatives in those places, and realize that if the gospel is to be active there, it is dependent upon the support, the prayers, and the encouragement of folks like us. I pray, Lord, as we give our offerings to this Annie Armstrong Easter offering, and our $2,300 goal is just a nebulous figure to give us guidance, but Lord, I pray that even much more than that, that we could give because we see how it's invested in people's lives. And we pray that you would receive that offering that we give, bless it and expand its value to those who receive it and use it. Now, I pray that you would guide us as we go to the fellowship time. We pray your blessing upon the food. And I thank you for those who have guided our program tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, thank you. We'll consider that a blessing on our meal. Wow. <laughs> if I did that on time, I don't think I did. <laughs> uh, and I want to thank all the ladies who brought in food this evening. Uh, hopefully you, you all enjoy that. So, um, let's eat.